Now that we've talked about head construction from different angles and rotations, let's see what this looks like in practice. So I have a number of heads in front of me uh, from different angles and rotations. Let's take a look. Um, so this head is facing directly towards me. So in this case, I'm going to sketch in an oval. I always sketch in an oval, obviously. This oval is going to be straight on. And then because she's looking straight at me, I'm going to draw a center line that runs perfectly straight down like this. Now I'm going to establish my eye level. Eye level is going to be over here like this. It's going to run at approximately the halfway point, right? Now I'm going to start sketching in my anchor point. That's going to be the bridge of the nose leading to the brows. Now in this case, uh, we're going to draw not with a line, but with shading. Uh, what we have here is a slight half tone on both sides, which leads to the brow. Uh, I'm making my construction lines obviously heavier than they would be normally under normal conditions. Uh, sketch in your construction lines really, really light so they don't get in the way afterwards. I'm looking at angles. So I'm looking at the angle of the brow line at the forehead, and then I'm seeing what the angle is as it turns into the temple this way. Once I've established my brow line, I'm going to take this distance, measure from here to the chin, and find the middle. Now, we're just practicing construction. We're not practicing capturing a likeness right now. Uh, we're just trying to get something that looks more or less human from different angles. Uh, I'll talk to you about how to get a likeness in another tutorial. Now we're going to take this distance from here to here, find the center, and that's going to be a good indication of where to put your mouth. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start sketching in my nose. Everybody, when you start sketching in the nose, use the side of your pencil, draw with shadow, not with line. Um, there's a little bit of an artificial separation between line and value, uh, which is actually enforced in most drawing classes. So I told you guys to put in a line, watch your rules of line, and then once the lines are good, the proportions are good, then you switch into shadow mode. Quite often when you're drawing really complex forms, it's gonna require you to draw with shadow. To basically draw and shade at the same time. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm indicating the shadow underneath the nose, the slight shadows on the nostrils. Uh, I'm not going into a tremendous amount of detail. This really isn't shading. It's just indicating the features with a little bit of value. Keep the facial features as soft as possible. Uh, first of all, lines don't actually exist in nature. Uh, there are a few here on the face, but the less lines you use, the more you're shading, the more effective, the more realistic the effect. So try not to put too many lines in. Here's the chin, like this. Once you have the brow line, the nose, and eye level center line, obviously. Now you can start indicating your eyes. Now, I'm going to look up. I notice that where the nostril ends, the eye begins. This way, where the nostril ends, the eye begins. So our tear ducts are over here. Now I'm going to start indicating the width of the eye. Now, if you guys remember, if we find the brow line here, the angle from here to here is going to give you a good approximation of where to end the eye. Uh, but this is going to be a little bit different for, for everybody. Every person you draw, proportions will vary. Uh, but that's a good average rule. So normally when I indicate the eye, the first thing I do is draw a little circle. That helps me conceptualize the shape and to be able to wrap my eyelids over the spherical surface. So I'm actually trying to think at all times in three dimensions. I'm thinking about how the eyelid is wrapping around, wrapping around, wrapping around. So, uh, more on how to draw eyes later. Uh, that's a detail. We already talked about eye construction. So I am following that sort of almond shape seen in the eye from the front, like this, like this. Now I'm gonna start, carv I'm gonna start carving into the head a little bit. So the head is a little tiny bit narrower at the temples. It goes a little bit wider at the cheekbones. Then it starts going in a little bit going this way. Again, I'm trying to avoid sharp lines inside the features. I notice her head tapers a little more. 
her chin is a little bit longer. But again, I'm not really trying to get a likeness here. Uh, I'm just trying to get the construction right. I'm practicing my rotations. I'm practicing this setup. All right, uh, now we can start placing our ears. Let me just put in slightly darker details. Um, I don't want to be too pale on you guys. I want you guys to actually see what I'm doing here. Okay, uh, the ears. See where they line up. So normally ears are going to line up with a brow. In her case, her ears are a little bit lower and they run a little bit lower as well. Um, I can use my horizontal alignment. Again, we're not really focused on getting the specifics exactly right. We're just trying to get something that looks more or less human. By the way, uh, when you're dealing with an entire figure and you have a limited amount of time, stick with the average proportions, right? The halfway points, half, half, half. Uh, there's not enough time to really deal with portraiture, right? Uh, it's the same as when you're drawing the armature at the beginning. I told you guys, stick with the proportion, right? The head, head and the, half a head, head and the half, right? All that kind of stuff. Stick with that unless you have enough time to really do the measuring. And that would be a pose that runs an hour, maybe even more, right? Where I've got enough time to really parse out what the proportions actually are. Okay, uh, so there's her hair. Um, look, uh, you can't see the model. Uh, it does look like her a little bit. Uh, her actual head is probably a little bit longer. Uh, what else? Uh, she's got a little more chin here. Uh, again, I'm not concerned with that. And when you're drawing the entire figure, and you have a limited, limited amount of time, you shouldn't really either. You should just try to get something that sort of looks like the model, that's proportional, looks human, that doesn't have a huge number of proportional mistakes. Uh, this is really, for what we're doing, when we're drawing the figure more than enough. Perfectly fine, okay? Don't concern yourself with portraiture when you're drawing the entire figure. You're not gonna have enough time, really. And usually the heads are this small anyway. They're really tiny. Um, okay, so I'm gonna draw a little bit of the neck. I always do. Uh, whenever you draw a portrait, never draw decapitated heads. Just don't do that. Uh, it just looks odd, weird. Okay, um, okay, so there is our head seen from the front. Let's deal with another rotation. Uh, let's deal with profile view. Uh, let's find my profile head here. Here it is. Okay, so profile is pretty straightforward. Uh, once again, I start off with a noble. I'm going to try to keep these more or less consistent more or less the same size. Let's draw another oval that's about the same proportion. Going this way. And again, you can adjust the oval if you see that the head is really long or really wide. Adjustments can be made. Uh, however, for right now, just stick to that same oval. Okay, she's looking this way. Let's drop our center line straight, 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 straight down here. So curving in the upper half, running straight past the halfway point. Let's indicate our eye level. It runs through the middle of the oval this way, right? You can see that forms a really good indication where the jawline needs to be. At our anchor point, we're gonna start dipping in a little bit, going this way, and then indicating the brow line. Again, do not use a sharp line to do this. So we're gonna run that brow line to about a third of the oval width. Use the brow line to measure out the base of the nose. So we're gonna take this distance, find the middle. That's gonna be right about there. Take this distance, find the middle. That's gonna be right about there. Her mouth is actually slightly open. Um, but um, we'll, we'll work it out. All right, so the next step is to start indicating the shape of the nose. We've got a wedge shape here going out this way. You'll notice that the nostrils always sits slightly behind the center line. Her mouth comes out a little bit, then her upper lip goes in this way. Um, again, more on mouths, how to finesse all these things. Uh, most importantly right now is just getting your construction right. Okay, so her mouth is ever so slightly open, which is gonna expand that shape a little bit. Um, I couldn't find a pro perfect profile uh, pose for you guys. Um, 
look rare for a model to pose directly in profile. Uh, usually they'll be rotated a little bit, angled a little bit. Uh, straight on profile tends to be avoided, right? Uh, just like straight on looking at you tends to be avoided in art. Um, you very rarely see works of art that are either in perfect profile or perfectly straight on. Okay, uh, now that we've got the facial features indicated, let's place the eye. Where the nostril ends, the eyes begin. Uh, that is a very good rule. Okay, so here's our eye going this way. And then we're going from almond shape here to, what did we say, slice of pie, I believe. Again, there's stuff I'm not telling you. Uh, mostly, I'm trying to avoid being linear, and I'm just focusing on construction. So long as the construction's right, uh, the individual features are not terribly important. Everybody, I want you to do a bunch of these. Work fast. Don't get bogged down in detail. Don't get bogged down in capturing likeness. Just get something that looks human and proportional, please. Okay, so I noticed that her forehead extends a little bit out. I mean, look, I am paying attention a little bit to getting the likeness, that's inevitable. Uh, but I'm not obsessing over it. Okay, we're missing a big chunk of her head here, right? What do we need to look for? Well, if we take the height, we're gonna have the same depth back here, like this. That's gonna carry back, 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 going this way. And then we take this distance, we find the halfway point this way, like this. That is going to give you a really good indication of where the jawline is. Again, this will vary a lot by person. Of course, of course it will, right? And now we can place the ear. So her ear lines up just slightly above the center line here, like this, and runs a little bit lower than the base of the nose. Um, look, if I place the ear a little bit higher, no one would be able to be, no one would criticize me, let's put it that way. Uh, it's within human range. Don't place the ears up here, look like a mouse, right? So again, these proportional rules help you create something that's human. Will they get you a likeness? Look, they'll get close. Look, I'm still trying to finesse the features. I'm still trying to get the shape of the nose. It'll look like the person. They'll just be something a little bit off, right? Proportions won't be quite the same. It's not gonna quite look like the person. So let's indicate a little bit of the hair. She's got a bun here, going back this way. All right, uh, now let's tack up. I need to draw a little bit of the shoulders always, right? Uh, don't draw decapitated heads. Okay, uh, now let's move on to three quarter view. All right, three-quarter view. Okay, let's move this over a little bit. Okay, uh, three-quarter view. Once again, I draw an oval. It's going this way, over here. Okay, so in this case, our model is in perfect three-quarter view, meaning that her center line is in between the halfway point this way and the contour of our oval. Uh, start the center line here, curve it in the upper half like this, and lower half, run it perfectly straight. Right, and make sure it ends at the base of the oval here. Next step is to indicate our center line. Let's do that. Here's our center line. Um, Here's our anchor point. Let's start indicating really gently. Be gentle, use the side of your pencil here. The bridge of the nose, our anchor point. And you can see shadows on both sides. Maybe not shadows, half tones. Going this way. And then we've got a slope running this way, like this. And then it starts sloping down like that. Okay, here's our brow line. Take a measurement from the brow line to the chin, find the middle. That's gonna be the line of the nose. Take the distance from the base of the nose to the chin, find the middle. That's gonna be the line of the mouth. Her mouth is open, but no problem, we'll deal with it. All right, uh, let's start indicating the shape of the nose. Again, guys, uh, I will talk to you about how to finesse noses, how to get things that look realistic. Um, 
just make sure that you're using the side of your pencil to indicate the shapes, not a sharp line. Again, I am drawing with shadow. I'm drawing with value. I'm not separating line and shading because they're really one and the same. All right, now, when I place the middle of the mouth, I'm gonna place it a little bit off my center line because we know that the mouth pushes forward here, All right? So in this case, I'm going to place my mouth a little bit over this way. If I really want to get a likeness, I'll figure out exactly how much for, further forward the mouth is past the center line. Uh, for right now, I'm just putting in an average distance. Again, it's gonna look like the person, it's gonna be really close. And actually, this model's proportions are pretty close to the proportions we've set down here. Her mouth is open, so I'm gonna drop the chin down a little bit. Uh, her proportions are very close to the proportions we set down. Um, that doesn't make the model more ideal. Uh, these average proportions, they're not really Greek ideal. Uh, they're not really anything. They're just the simplest way of representing the proportions. Uh, they're really easy to, remember, to memorize. Um, are they accurate? Will they give you a likeness? Once again, no, they won't. They'll get you something that looks human though, uh, which at the beginning is really important and also important when you're doing a fast drawing, right? So I'm going to stick with these generic proportions. Okay, so I'm indicating once I've got the nose, the brow, my eye line, eye level, center line, I'm going to start indicating the shape here. Now here I'm looking for the distance, the intersection between the bridge of the nose and the tear duct. How much space is there? If is there overlap? Uh, why? Because I can't see the nostril on the other side. Here I can. Alright, uh, now let's draw the eye. Now, we're looking for a flatter angle, angle? Curve. A flatter curve here and a little bit of a rounder curve here. We're looking for that teardrop shape. Again, things will vary a lot, but this is a good general rule. Look for teardrops. Look for the brow, the eyelid, excuse me, to wrap around the eyeball here. Flatter here and wrapping around here. Okay, let's get the other eye this way. Again, I will talk to you about how to render eyes, mouths, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a few little tricks, details that you need to know. Okay, um, actually I threw myself in the detail a little bit too early. I really should have been focused a little bit more here. So let's get the back of her head, let's get the jawline, let's place the ear, and then we can go back and start carving into her head. Uh, priorities, right? Big to small. Uh, this stuff is small detail. I should have just placed the eyes and immediately moved to the back. I didn't. I get lost. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of cranium. How much? Again, about five-sixth this distance. Um, if I have more time, and we will have more time, uh, this is actually measurable. I'm going to use a proportion measuring tool to figure out exactly what the depth is. For right now, we're just dealing with averages. All right, so where's the jawline? About the distance from the brow to the chin is about a jawline. Here's a jawline. Again, this will vary a lot, but this is a really good rule of thumb that applies to most people. All right, uh, so here's her neck. And by the way, the neckline is going to line up with the center line or slightly off the center line. Again, depends on the person. Uh, that's a fairly thick neck. Uh, let's start carving into that a little bit. All right, so she's turning over her shoulder. We've got some twist here. All right, uh, let's just quickly indicate her hair, her forehead, going this way. Okay, uh, I'm not gonna start shading right now. We'll deal with shading in a little bit. Okay, so here are our three rotations, front, profile, and three-quarter. They seem to have grown a little bit, little by little. Okay, uh, now let's talk about a few other rotations, slightly off center and then slightly off profile. Now let's talk about two other rotations. 
Uh, both are loosely considered to be three-quarter view, but traditionally three-quarter view is this, uh, where the head is perfectly rotated at 45 degrees. Now, uh, you're not always going to see that, however. Uh, so sometimes you're going to see a head that is straight on, mostly, but rotated a little tiny bit to the side this way. Or sometimes you're going to see a head that's mostly in profile, mostly, but is rotated slightly towards you. So let's talk about those two rotations. They're still considered three-quarter view, but I would generally call them off-center or slightly off-profile. Um, all right, so we're still going to start off with the same oval. That certainly doesn't change. The added complication is that now we have to start looking for where the center line is. We can't automatically assume it's going to be here. So this is slightly off profile. If it was perfectly profile, our center line would run off the contour as it does here. Uh, I'm looking at it right now and I notice that our center line runs just a little bit off the side, off the edge of the oval. Developing an instinct for where to place the center line takes practice. So this is going to be quite frustrating. You're going to look at a rotation and then place the center line not quite in the right spot and then start drawing and realize, oh, wait a minute, the center line needs to be a little further over. Uh, with practice, with repetition, you're going to start putting it in the right spot and knocking it out of the park. All right, uh, eye level remains the same. It's going to be in the middle here, like this. Where eye level intersects the center line, place, uh, let me zoom in a little bit on this. There we go. Okay, uh, we're gonna place our anchor point, the bridge of the nose. Again, do not put a sharp line there. Do not put a sharp line on the brow. Use a soft line. You don't want those lines to get in the way of your detail later. Once you found the brow line, take a measurement from here to the chin, find the middle, that's a good place for the nose. Take a measurement from the base of the nose to the chin, find the middle. That's a very good place for the mouth. Okay, in this case, her mouth is closed, uh, which simplifies things a little bit. Um, okay, now let's start indicating the facial features. I'm gonna extend the nose out a little bit, going in a little bit. This way, start placing her nostrils. The nostrils are gonna sit on this line. And then the mouth, in this case, is going to push slightly past the center line. Here, like this. I'm going to drop this down a little bit. Again, I'm not looking for a likeness, but I'm going to get close anyway. Uh, now, the mouth here is a teardrop shape. I forgot to talk about this, right? We're going to see much more curve on the distant side and much less on the near side. Right? Think teardrop. More curve here less curve here. Again, use the side of your pencil. Do not put a sharp line there. All right, here's her chin. And by the way, chins will not always sit on the center line. Sometimes they recede. In her case, it actually pushes ever so slightly this way. Uh, we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, now that we've indicated the nose, the brow, we've got eye level, let's place our actual eyes. Where the nostril ends, the eyes begin. Again, some people's eyes are further apart. Some people are closer in, deeper, shallower. Um, this is a good rule of thumb to keep you from drawing something that looks really odd. Um, there are other complications. So let's look for the teardrop shape here. So there's going to be more curve on the outside, less curve on the inside. This way, going this way, like this. And then the back eye, we're just looking for the intersection. In this off profile view, the eye is going to be partially obscured by the bridge of the nose. All we need to do is figure out by how much. Wrapping around, wrapping around, this way. Okay, okay uh, let's get her cranium. Uh, in this case, she's slightly off profile. In profile, this is going to be one and one. In this case, it's going to be almost one and one, right? So it's going to fall ever so slightly, ever slightly so short of the height here and here. Don't make 
the back of her head quite as deep as it would be in profile. It's slightly compressed. And then place your jawline. It's not going to be quite in the middle. You're going to see a little more of this part of the face, less of this part. Okay, now that we have a little bit of the neck, we can start placing her ears. Her ears line up with, as we say, right, uh, her upper lip here and probably her upper eyelid here and here. Uh, they sit on the jawline. Okay. So here is a pose that is sometimes called three quarter view, but really it's off profile view. Slightly off profile. Okay, uh, we can start carving in a little bit this way. I forgot to add hair. Um, I'm not going to bother for right now. Okay, let's deal with slightly off center view. Another rotation. Let's draw it here. Let's just drop it directly underneath the profile view for symmetry. Okay, you draw an oval. If she was straight on, our center line would be here, like this. She's not straight on, she's rotated a little bit. This is tricky. I need to push my center line slightly off the middle, curve it in the upper half, and then lower half hang straight. This is really where placing your center line exactly in the right spot matters. Getting the exact balance between how much you see of this side of the face and this side of the face really is dependent on making sure that center line is in the right spot. Okay, here's our eye level. Let's place our anchor point. Bridge the nose, leading to the brow. This is going to ensure that we see less of this brow and a little bit more of this brow. Right, The head is rotated a little bit this way. It's going to ensure that we don't take this pose and center her back so that her nose is actually pointed this way. Um, all right, so we're going to find the middle here, find the middle here, this way. And now I'm going to start the nose here, like this. And then I know that the nose is going to push forward a little bit so that the middle of the nose, the tip of the nose, is going to be slightly off the center line this way. So I'm using the center line to orient the direction of the features to make sure that I'm not drawing a nose that's going straight forward on a head that's rotated slightly off center. I'm seeing a little more of this nostril. A little bit less of this one. This is one of those cases where getting these constructions exactly right uh, has really, really big dividends. There's a lot of advantages to it. Okay, so the middle of the mouth, we're going to push slightly past our center line. This way. Like that. All right, uh, now that we have the frame, let's set our eyes. In this case, we can see both nostrils, which is very convenient because where the nostril ends, the eyes begin. I usually start off with the eyeballs. Then I go with the tear duct. And in this case, she's looking up. In this particular pose, her eyes are kind of tilted upward. Um, which changes the shape of the eye. Yeah, there's complexity, depending on which way she's looking. Uh, sometimes the shape of the eyelids changes. Okay, I'm not worried about that right now. I'm just making sure that my proportions are correct. My angles, rotations are correct. Okay, so I'm gonna start carving into her head a little bit, going this way, going like that. Okay, and then we see a little bit more of this side of her face. On this side, like this. Let's set her ears in the right spot. So from here to here. Uh, we're seeing a little bit more of this ear. Just a touch. And a little bit less of this ear. Like that. That goes up a little bit. 
we're looking a little bit the wrong way. It's going this way. Okay, uh, now we're going to draw a little bit of the neck. Ooh, decapitated head. No good, no good. No decapitated heads, please. Even when you're practicing, right? Even if you're doing construction, practice drawing a little bit of the shoulders, the neck. Just a good habit. What else, what else can I tell you right now? Okay, so here are our five rotations. Uh, there's a couple more rotations when the head is rotated backwards. Uh, we're not gonna deal with that right now. Uh, that's not a complication that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, okay, I want you guys to practice this a lot. So collect a bunch of heads from the new Masters Academy and do a bunch of, let's say, 10 minute drawings where all you're focused on is just getting the oval and getting the construction right from different rotations. Um, okay, uh, so in the next tutorial, we're gonna deal with what happens when the head is tilted forward and back. Uh, same deal though, we're gonna work fast. We're not gonna think about likeness, we're just gonna get the construction and then moving forward, move forward to the next drawing. So we get lots of repetitions in, so we can practice a lot, fail a lot, correct ourselves, and get better at this really important process.